Hello, am I live? Okay. Do you buy into the gluten-free movement? It seems like a movement, right? Uh, as someone with a firm understanding that what goes into our body affects our spirit and our soul, I'm just, I'm one to question what God has to say about this whole gluten-free thing. And, and I want to examine what God says is best for the body. Um, you want to dig in with me? That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing today. The title of today's Coffee and Convo with Christine is Gluten and Gluttony. <laughs> um, now, why do I use the term gluttony here? Well, it's um, it's because it's a word that we like immediately associate with both spirit and like physical food, you know? So I am not saying just a forewarning, just a disclaimer. <laughs> I am not saying that eating gluten is gluttonous, okay? I just want to clarify that right now and say good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Happy June. Say hi when you pop on. I see there's some people hopping on to say hi. Now, if if I, I cannot see your name because I'm using StreamYard, unless you like approve StreamYard to um, see your name. So um, go ahead and comment. You can comment. I'm just going to see Facebook user and not your name unless you do that. So, but say hi, comment, let me know you're here. Um, I wanna know what you're up to this morning and, and I would love to know what you think about this topic. I'm really excited to go through the comments. I know there's like some controversy surrounding this um, topic of gluten. There's a lot of kind of feelings about it, you know? Um, so I just want to like, I want to address it. I want to address it, um, through with a sound mind and, um, yeah, talk about this. Okay. So here's the question. Is this gluten-free thing a trend? Do you think it's a trend? Now I, I want to share why I think that this is not like going gluten-free is not just for like the hippie. It's not just for the uppity or the extreme conservative. It is not just for um, those that are celiac or um, that have a diagnosis of being, uh, of having like a gluten-free intolerance. Um, I want to go into why all of those things, um, and and you know, eating healthy or even going gluten free does not mean does not need to mean deprivation or expensive because I feel like that's kind of where we go when we start thinking about um, taking some things out of our diet or you know not consuming certain things or um, well, really just addressing the topic. Um, it, addressing it does not mean that we need to um, start investing and doing a bunch of expensive things <laughs> or um, deprive ourselves. And so I just want to put that out there and make sure that we have that understanding that eating healthy, um, is all about nourishment, vibrancy, longevity, um, and just making us feel good, right? And avoiding feeling worse. Okay, so what is gluten? Let's dig into what gluten even is. Now, gluten is a protein found in wheat and rye. Um, in a wheat protein and a rye. Uh, 
And this is like nowadays we're not dealing with like our grandmas, our great grandmas kind of gluten, right? Um, there was like one strain of gluten back in the day. Now there is at least 42 different strains of gluten that have been hibernized. And some are genetically modified and completely unrecognizable for the body. Um, so this hibernized gluten, this is what it does. It has a tendency to break down the intestinal tract and all the toxins and the things will then leak out into the bloodstream, which causes toxic overload. As you can imagine, like where do the toxins go when they're floating around in the blood? The toxins actually go attach themselves to fat cells. They get stored in your fat cells. So that's where the toxins live. So the stomach um, in, it, in the intestinal lining can break down um, because it doesn't, it cannot process these mm, unrecognizable uh, strands of gluten. And, um, and then that causes inflammation and the body can't process the foods and the, and the foods and the toxins on their way out of, you know, the body in the intestinal tract. Well, they will leak out into the bloodstream. And, and this is why this is why we need to look at it, <laughs> you know, and yet celiac, if somebody is diagnosed with celiac, this is detrimental. Like it can be this immediate reaction that is very scary and something they have to be really, really hyper aware of. So um, if you're not celiac, it's something that we should still be aware of because the consequences could be um, later down the road, later down the road. So, um, I want, this is, this is why you should consider, um, that the whole gluten-free thing is not just a trend, but it's something you should look at, uh, if you're not. Um, if these are some red flags, these are some red flags I want you to just be aware of that gluten might be causing. Um, bloating, inflammation, anxiety, arthritis, or any kind of joint pain, um, weight gain, uh, not able to lose weight, um, depression, yeah, anxiety, constipation, <laughs> uh, fatigue, infertility, iron deficiencies, skin issues like acne or eczema, and any kind of autoimmune disorder. Any of these, well, are red flags that gluten might be a good thing to remove from consuming, from your consumption, from your diet. Gluten-free is going to be a good place to begin healing. Many researchers now believe that there's no greater drain on someone's energy and a trigger for inflammation than gluten. Now listen here, I am not trying to steal your birthday, okay? <laughs> this does not need to be a horrible thing, all right? You know, um, there are lots of naturally gluten-free foods, okay? Now, um, Packaged processed foods, uh, if these foods are in like packaged and they're processed, then it might be something that you need to look at. But um, let me see if I'm getting, sorry. I just wanna see who's here. I'm not seeing it. Okay, so, so naturally gluten-free foods are fruits and veggies all day long, right? Proteins, like good unpackaged, protein, it's like meats, eggs. Um, and then there are actually starches and grains that are gluten-free. Uh, 
that's rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes, cassava, yuca, corn, quinoa, tapioca flour, and then there's also gluten-free oats if you're if you love oats, right? Now, if you are celiac, you'll have to look for cross um, cross contamination. So make sure that you're you're looking at that if like it's like a big thing if it's a huge allergy. Good morning. I see somebody on here. I don't see your name. <laughs> I don't see your name because you haven't approved the StreamYard, but um, you can type it or you can go click that button to uh, let me see. Yeah, but I would love to know who is here. Okay. Um, so there are some flowers that are cleaner than others, like um, that are that are higher quality you know, that don't have quite as many chromosomes and um, processes in them that can be detrimental to our health. Um, one of them is in corn flour, and um, it is a lot more compatible for your body. Um, and also, if you're um, wanting to limit the, the quality or just the quantity of the gluten that you're consuming, sourdough is also a good option. So it has much less gluten in it. Hello, Lenny. I see ya. Hello. I'm glad you made it. So the thing here is Train and Truth's core value is that body, soul, and spirit are intimately connected. And what we do with one part directly impacts the other parts of us, right? So when I bring up this word gluttony, um, it's just, it's a spiritual term that's associated with food. And so that's why I just threw it in because um, let's like, let's talk about this thing, gluttony, when it comes to this, um, this kind of controversial subject of gluten. Okay, uh, gluttony, I'm gonna quote uh, an article by, doc, by Ryan Andrew, who is a um, nutritionist and he's, it's an article that he wrote. And I don't believe he is a believer. I don't think, I don't know, maybe he is. He mentioned going to a Methodist church in his article, so perhaps but I found this article super interesting. Um, he says, gluttony is the excessive consumption that deprives another being of life-giving um, necessity. Gluttons devour more, leaving others with less. It's immoderation. Now, beyond excessive consumption, gluttony describes worship of food and deriving excessive pleasure from it. So you guys, I am going to go as far as to say that the way our culture or the food industry has altered the building blocks of God-given nourishment and manipulated it versus just being creative with it, you know what I mean? It has led to an even greater tendency towards this excessiveness in consumption. You know, this this um, a greater tendency to um, derive excessive pleasure from it. Um, so the communication uh, with on the cellular level inside of our body has been interrupted with the toxins coming in between and, and manipulating the verbiage between our cells. And so it's much easier to understand what we want, what our body wants versus what our body needs. Um, that's, that's really kind of where I see, what I see kind of happening at this point. Now, generally, when we're talking about gluttony, um, it, can, it can include not saving, savoring a reasonable amount of food, uh, eating outside of a prescribed time, like uh, mindless eating. Um, it can be in anticipating eating with preoccupied longing. Uh, consuming costly foods, like eating lavishly simply for the purpose of cons 
conspicuous consumption, uh, not being content with common foods, always seeking delicacies, or perhaps supersizing, um, and then paying too much attention to food. This is this is something we also need to be aware of paying too much attention to food which includes paying too much attention to how we look which um, they argue can become idolatry right okay this is more from from the article it says the christian concept of the seven deadly sins right um gluttony is considered one of the seven deadly sins it originated from early christian monk Evagoras, original list of eight evil thoughts, later modified by St. John Cassin and Pope Gregory to what we're familiar with, you know, the seven deadly sins. Now, gluttony is discovered, or is gluttony is considered a deadly sin. For, for reference, the other deadly sins include pride, greed, lust, envy, anger, and sloth. Now, in the original context, a sin was only deadly if it opposed one's love of God. For example, if someone merely ate more than necessary, they've committed an excusable sin. It's only deadly when they're so taken by the pleasure of eating that it turns them away from spiritual instructions. So in the modern context, we might say that something, when something governs our life, it can be a destructive habit that undermines our goodness of character, getting worn in over time. And really at its core, gluttony is about separating ourselves from others, uh, family, friends, culture. And I would go, you know, as far as to say God, it separates us from God. That's kind of the overarching message, I think that gluttony brings. Now, um, we need to remember that diet is not a salvation issue when it comes to our food, right? Uh, it's not a salvation issue in any way, shape or form. Um, salvation comes from believing and declaring Christ as Lord. Um, and I'm not even gonna go as far to say that it's a moral issue. It's, I just, I don't think it is. There's no real right or wrong way. You know, the Bible does not distinguish that. Um, my goal is to come alongside my sisters in the church and encourage nourishment of the body because it impacts our spiritual well-being, right? And and a physic um, and and because physically, our capability to live out God's purpose in our lives has to do with our physical health. And of course, what we eat plays a part in that. So I just wanna bring some scripture in here. In, in Deuteronomy 8, God said, um, in Deuteronomy 8, this is, <laughs> is talking about the Israelites in the desert. He said, yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live on bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. When uh, Jesus was tempted with food um, by Satan in the desert after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, this is what Jesus said. He said, I uh, know the, the scriptures say people do not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Food is not the issue. God is the one that sustains. He's the one that sustains. Um, and, and that's what's most important, right? So, it is true that if we start focusing so much on what we eat, even if we aim to be healthy, it can take our focus off of Christ. And we can start actually worshiping the wrong thing. <laughs> you right? Anything we um, don't, anything that distracts us or that we put more focus on than God can become an idol in our life. And that is not 
that is not the goal here. Uh, we want to be aware and we want to steward our bodies well, but we do not want it to be the main focus. No, God is our focus. But I want you, I want to encourage you to just take some time this week and examine your habits, um, observe your body, like pray about this idea of gluten. And if perhaps gluten is one of those things in your life that you could go without, maybe decide to test it for a bit. And if you have any of those red flags, I'll be posting a post with those red flags in them um, so that you, you know, it's written out and you can kind of um, evaluate if any of those things you're dealing with, and maybe um, just removing gluten might help, might help with them. Um, and if you're interested, if you're interested in working with me to see what we what might be best for your body as you step into this calling of God on your life, um, to be at, for your body to be at its most vibrant and capable capacity, um, I'll post a link and let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay, next week. So this week we really looked at kind of what gluttony is. We looked at what um, gluten is and what it actually can do, the tendency it has in our bodies. And, and um, it was very just kind of um, the basics. Next week, this was very informative. Next week, I want to dig into some of the practical things. I want to, we're going to dig into how to identify gluten in our foods. Um, it's like aliases because it goes by other names. Okay. It's very sneaky. Uh, and to, to um, I want to tell you where it might be hiding so that you can just be aware. Uh, and then we're going to look at what exactly the Bible and st statistics say about this word gluttony. So I want to hear all of your thoughts. If you watch the replay, let me know. And um, yeah, tell me, tell me what you think. Um, I would love to know what, where you're kind of at with this whole gluten-free concept. All right. I love you guys. Have a fabulous weekend. Thanks for hanging out. I will see you later on the wall or next week. <laughs> Bye.